everyone, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking to you about misconceptions on technology consulting which I think is going to be a very fun topic because I've heard this from family, some friends, even people interested in consulting that I really love to beat these down to death because they're misconceptions or at least to a certain point. Maybe for some of them they do have some kind of truth to it but we'll dive right into the video and tell you exactly which ones. So the first one is really just, I need to be super ambitious, hard worker, and show who's boss all the time. And the reason why this one probably comes up is that they always have this misconception or at least the notion that, that the consulting industry is super competitive, super ambitious, and everyone is like a go-getter and that anyone that is a straggler will stay behind. And in some cases that is true. We always want hard workers and ambitious people. Otherwise, who's going to get promoted and who won't be? Um, but when it comes to actually, does everyone need to be like that? That's not true because we don't want everyone to be type A go-getter, not giving a shit about anyone, doing everything that they have to do because though it's great, you still need to be a team player and you also have to remember that a lot of people here, they want good work-life balance. And a lot of times I've actually noticed that in the consulting industry, there's self-imposed pressure. Like for example, if you watch all those movies or shows about investment banking, you're probably thinking, oh, they have tight pressure, they have a lot of deadlines, they have a lot of performance metrics and indicators they have to meet. But honestly, the self-imposed pressure is really just probably, okay, if I'm in consulting, I need to be like that. So I'm going to be like that. You really need to set your boundaries because if you were in that situation, you're definitely going to burn out really quickly and they're going to definitely tell. So you need to really make sure to balance everything out, especially your boundaries. And with the self-imposed pressure, this definitely makes it harder for a lot of the entry level. They're going to be like, oh, I need to do like this, but I don't know anything. So how am I going to be working hard and studying smart and all those kind of things? But really, I think from this alone, um, you don't need to force yourself. Definitely try your best though. You always want to work smart and work hard. So you definitely don't want to only be working hard. You always want to work smart as well. But those that actually do well in, you don't always need to be that type A aggressive need to go do everything that you need to do because at the end of the day you need to be able to be likable <laughs> and then number two can i get promoted just from doing my job well yes and no like you have to do your job really well and of course you have to do your job well but um to get promoted actually when it comes to the bigger consulting firms it's going to be a lot more competitive that you need to do a little bit more than your actual job description so in this case more than just client work check my video over here on how i discuss about plus ones that you need to be aware of as well and in some firms they call it initiative work this is really just work you've been doing on the side outside of your client work that is really contributing to the company as a whole so for example, mine is office champion. I organize events and activities for my office for the work they practice, at least in New York. So those are the kind of things that we're looking for in terms of how to stand out. You want to do not just do well in your job, but also do well outside of your job because they want to know that like you're not just a worker horse. You want to be able to see that you have the qualities to lead. And this one I think is hilarious because what if I'm an introvert? And the reason why I think this is hilarious is because I'm actually an introvert. I'm like on in the Myers-Briggs type indicator test, I'm like a 90% something like that. And a lot of people don't actually think that because of the way I talk and the way I carry myself. I'm not actually an extrovert. Um, I'm probably going to be something more of like an extroverted introvert, but more on the train side because, you know, you kind of need to be an extrovert in consulting. But I'm going to go into why you don't need to be an extrovert. So specifically in technology consulting, we're a bunch of nerds. This is what I really like to say because we really are just a bunch of nerds. We're not a bunch of people that are in business suits and everything just trying to get your work done. It's we're actually a bunch of techie people, nerdy people, like I had people. Like I literally played Minecraft with my coworkers, okay? <laughs> That's how nerdy and geeky we are. Most of the time we are introverted and not to mention that a lot of the work we're doing, you don't actually need to be in person. We're working remotely, we're working with them on like a Zoom call, or we're working in person, but not as much as like a management consultant or a strategy consultant. So just to clarify a little bit, you don't need to be extroverted to do well in your job. And this is why. So a lot of times like you may think that yes, introverted means that yes, I'm probably not that outgoing and I probably can't do my, I can't the, get the client to like me that much, but you really need to think about what is actually the definition of an introvert. Introvert really means how you take an energy. So if I were to have an all day session in person, I would probably be tired, but I think like most people would be tired, honestly. 
and then the extrovert people will probably get energized from being in that all-day session I don't know how many people that actually feel like that but the real reason why I think actually introverts do a good job is that we are introspective and we also do a lot better on one-on-ones and in my opinion when it comes to presentations it's not that effective you need to really be sitting one-on-one -on -one with the client at least like one person in the client team, to really get all the best insights and everything so i just want to also note that i've been asking everyone in my team so almost like about four teams by now what mbti they are and now like a really mass majority of them were introverts i was actually shocked even the most extroverted person i thought i knew was going to be an extrovert was an introvert so it goes to show you don't need to be an introvert we're just going to be very tired after work but i feel like that's everyone so this is the question i get from a lot of older people like my parents <laughs> how can i be a consultant if i don't know enough to consult and a lot of people think that especially if you're a college student that you just graduated and you're wondering like why does accenture or ey or deloitte want to hire me right out of college i know nothing and while that is the case, what we do care about is your mindset, your thinking, your always willingness to learn and all those kind of things because at the end of the day, the consulting firm is actually gonna be sending you through training and certifications to really get all this done. And I also do want to note that like if you are an experienced hire, they are gonna be expecting some kind of experience, but not necessarily relevant experience or at least like 100% relevant experience so what i mean is like for example you were doing oracle implementations and then now you want to do workday implementations they would sh they would shift you right over however with COVID 19 and everything maybe they will just be specifically targeting people that are certified in that area so they don't need to spend that much money in training but that really depends on the firm so specifically when it comes to do i know enough to consult a lot of times they are asking for problem solving and also a lot of times the client doesn't know better than you i know this is going to be like wow we're so we're so posh and everything but really if you take training and they have not you're already better than them you already know the system a lot better than them i actually felt the same exact way when i first started i was like i just took training what, what could i possibly know but then i realized that they're on a completely blank slate only when i have like a experience for example when i mentioned my projects video over here that if you have like an enhancement or tech support that you're gonna be working with people that are familiar with the platform or software or service. So this means that you may actually need to actually know your stuff. But again, they're not gonna expect you to know everything because if you really do know everything, then why are you working in a consulting firm? You might as well work for the actual software itself. A lot of times they also ask us what are best practices because even though we may not know everything about the software or the technology, because we've worked with so many different clients in so many different industries, and if you work in a global company, you worked with so many global companies as well, and you have a lot of internal resources, you can really go back and say, okay, I've seen that in this industry, it's better to do this, or maybe in this particular practice, you need to do this. So these are the kind of resources that we picked up. And then we also, this is the main reason why we have consulting firms too, is because you're not just a resource going to a project, you're actually a bunch of resources that you can use but only deploying one person out there, but you have access to being in that big firm. And then this is the question I get a lot is, do I need technical skills or a tech major? So when I say tech major, I mean like computer science or engineering, you do not need it. You will be given training as I mentioned before. And especially in technology consulting, like I know that if you know the industry trends, which is like, oh, know what is cloud computing or know what is internet of things or what is artificial intelligence, you need to know those trends. Because if you were interested in technology, you should know them to begin with. You're not expected to know how to like program in R or program in SQL, which in, I mean, these are all helpful skills. You just wanted to reiterate that you don't need to know these skills. Like a lot of times I know actually people that come from like a psychology major or a law degree, or they're even a veteran and they never went to college. So there's so many programs out there. And there's also so many skills that you can be learning as a consultant. You don't necessarily need to limit yourself like, oh, if I don't have technology, I can't do technology consulting. However, if you want to really make yourself stand out, like for example, if you're going for a workday and workday is a hot skill, you should have a workday certification if you're going for a workday position. Otherwise, you're just like, what are you doing? But when it comes to actually getting into the field itself, you don't necessarily need it. But it's always going to look good that you have some kind of technical skill because it shows that you have some kind of interest in technology that you've tried to do something. However, if you have experience in like say product management, it's not necessarily a tech career, but it is tech, that definitely counts. And I, this is what I'm trying to say is that you don't actually need to know a lot of tech stuff to even be a technology consultant. 
And this is the last one that goes along hand in hand with the previous one is, do you need to code? And you do not need to code. I actually have not written a single line of code my entire two years here at Accenture. And mostly because there's so many roles out there that don't even need to touch any code. So for example, right now I'm a solutions architect and my case is really a functional consultant, but in today's world, they consider a solutions architect where you're really working with the client to try to build a solution and you're trying to build the architecture. So there's so many ways that you can work with the architecture of the software, but you're not necessarily coding at all. You're just designing it, the flow and everything. Um, and this is exactly what I do with business processes. And I always like a lot of these condition rules and logical flows to see that it flows properly. So there's so many things that you can do. You just definitely need to look into it. Like product manager, like I mentioned before, you don't need to code, but it is technically a tech role and you can definitely do something very similar to that if you were to be in a technology consulting role. So with that said, those are all the misconceptions that I've been hearing. I know this is not everything, but if you have any other misconceptions or at least questions of like things that you've been curious about because someone said something or maybe you read something online and you want me to try to talk to you about if it's true or not, write it down in the comments below and I will try to respond to you to see if it's actually true or not. Maybe, who knows, maybe people were actually thinking about it, but they're just not thinking about it right now. So you're actually going to be helping them. Guys. My friend came here, Angel, and she went to Maid and got this little souvenir. It's a little unicat! 